Superintendent, Dr. W.F. Kumuye. <clears throat> Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Such a joy to be with you here tonight. But I don't know whether you are ready for me. Are you ready? Yes. When you come to a place like once in a year or twice in a year, if I preach one hour in Nigeria, because you know I preach almost every week there, if I don't preach just one hour, I'll be waiting for the next week, another hour, I'd wait for the other week, another hour. When you come to a place once or twice in a year, I need three hours at least from you. <laughs> Praise the Lord. But I'm not going to keep you for three hours uh, tonight because you are coming on Sunday. And when you come on Sunday, tighten your belt. I'm going to ask you a question when you come on Sunday. Is there anything too hard for God? I'm not going to allow you to give the answer. I'm going to allow the Almighty God to give the answer to you. And the answer is going to come with a thunder. And then everything that is negative in your life, any mountain, will blow it out of the way. It's going to be a wonderful time. Today is Friday and we're talking... Did you have this uh, paper? In you? Did they give you something like this? You had it? Wonderful. And let me read it to you. It says, Deep Alive Bible Church, where? London, the center of the whole universe. Praise the Lord. And then it says, Bring your way to success. And tonight I'm talking about success. And um, I'm an evangelist, I'm a teacher, I'm a pastor, and I'm going to combine everything together. So if you don't, if you have your Bible, you open your Bible, I'm going to read the Bible. And then if you have some things, some paper to write with, you'll need to write, because I'm talking about the way, spring your way. That means I'm going to take you on a journey. And on that journey, then until I get you to the point of success, I'm not going to leave you alone. We're going to get there together. You'll be there. I said you'll be there. But you must be willing to pay the price. A student came to a philosopher many years ago. He wanted to have the knowledge and the success, the wisdom that the philosopher had. He came to the office of the philosopher and then he said, Sir, I've been watching you. If I can just have what you have, if I can possess what you possess, that will be all right for me. How can I have what you have? The young man was asking for how can I have the success you have? And the teacher, that is the philosopher, did not give an answer. He said, come on with me. And he held his hand and he took him to the riverside. And then they got to the riverside. They entered the river. Practical teaching. And then he, he made him to go down into the river, submerged him, and then held him there, and then later brought him out. And the young fellow was breathing like this, panting as if he was going to die. And then the philosopher asked, when you were under the water, what was the only single thing that you wanted above any other thing? He said, I just wanted to come out and breathe air. He said, when you desire the wisdom, the understanding, the success, the achievement. Like you desire that air, when you are inside the river, you'll get it. There is a price to pay. And if you're willing to pay that price to get into success, then you will have it. But if you are here tonight for me to entertain you, for me to just make you feel great and feel nice, success doesn't come that way. We're going to go on a journey, and I'm going to take you step by step by step. And if you're willing to take that step with me, I'm, go I'm assuring you that success will come. That achievement will come. And that breakthrough will come in your life in Jesus' name. Before I even start, I must serve you a notice. It may surprise you. You know, Pentecostal people, and deeper life is, uh, you know, I think uh, we're a little bit Pentecostal. 
Uh, when, anywhere we go, you come for an evening meeting like this. Uh, oh Lord, heal me. There's nothing wrong with that. But I'm here to tell you, I see many people who are healthy, but they're not successful. There are many people that are saying, I come to a meeting like this tonight. All I'm looking for, Lord, I need deliverance. That's great. I know many people that don't have any demon affliction, but they're not successful. They do not have what it takes. Although they are healed, although they are delivered, they are healthy and strong. I even know many people who are rich. They have money, but they're not successful. And therefore, I'm going to talk about success. I'm going to take you there step by step. I'm not talking on healing. I'm not talking on deliverance. Yes, I'll pray for you to be healed. But if you get healed and you get what I'm teaching tonight, then are you going to have the success? We're going to get it. I said we're going to get it. But you must just be patient with me and, you know, I'll teach, I'll read the Bible and then we'll get, and then those of us who are leaders, you know, I'm sorry to talk to you, but you know, we need this success more than anybody else. Am I right? And myself, I need what I'm telling you. And you'll see when I begin to get into the scriptures and you too as leaders, you must write down the notes and everything. In fact, if you write notes and they don't write notes, I'll be all right because when you are successful, they too will be successful. Is that okay? Thank you very much. Now we're going to pray. You'll stand up, please. And then we'll pray together. Everybody standing up. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you tonight. We bless your name, Lord, because we know you're going to do something great, wonderful in the life of everyone here tonight in Jesus' name. And I pray, Lord, we'll go on this journey together and move from this point and get to the destination we need to get to in Jesus' name. The success, the principle, the seed of success plant in every heart tonight in Jesus' name. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. You can sit down. If you're using the King James Version of the Bible, the word success appears only once in the whole of the King James Version of the Bible. Think about that. The word success appears just once in the version of the Bible that we use in Joshua chapter 1 verse 8. Joshua chapter 1 verse 8. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. And then it says, But thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have what? Good success. It says, this book of the word of the Lord will not depart out of your mouth, but you'll meditate therein. And it says, day and night. And then it says, it is only in that way you will make your way prosperous. And then it says, you will have what? Good success. And tonight, as I talk about success, I'm talking about something that, you know, you'll have to do. Because it says, you'll observe to do according to what is written therein. And then you will meditate. You have to turn it over in your mind. And you have to look over it again. And then it says, then, if you will do that, you'll have good success. I'm going to pick three people in the Bible that went through the same journey. And I'm going to look at them and I'm going to see how did they get from where they were to where they ought to be. How did they become successful? How did they have what the Lord had told them, this is what I'm going to give you. And eventually they were able to have, have that thing. And then I'm, I'm making the title tonight, Paying the price for success. Paying the price for success. You need to be willing and ready to pay the price. And the three people I'm looking at tonight, I'm looking at number one, Joseph. 
Joseph. Have you heard that name before? Joseph. There are many Josephs you'll find in the Bible. I'm talking about the first one. The first of them all. Joseph in Genesis. Number two, I'm talking about Joshua. Joshua. And then number three, I'm talking about Jabez. And each of those people, they have a lot to tell us. In fact, somebody said, all we can do now is climb on the shoulders of the people who have gone before us. Climb on the shoulders of the people who have gone before us. Here is Joseph. And I see the way he lived his life. And I see all the pitfalls, all the persecutions, and all the stumbling blocks that came in his life. And yet he went from where he was, and he got right to the top. I'm going to stay or stand on the shoulder of Joseph. And then I say, Joseph, come on now. Let's move together. Let's walk together. And we'll get to that place of success together in Jesus' name. Talking about somebody having conflicts and challenges and difficulties. You are thinking about Joshua. And Joshua, when he came out of that wilderness, he was at the very border. And then the Lord told Joshua, you are going to now wear the shoes of Moses. What a great challenge. And you are going to divide the land of Canaan. The land of Canaan was filled with giants. And their cities were walled to the sky. And the foundations of their walls were very deep. And yet God said, you will take that land and you will succeed and you divide the land to the children of Israel. I like to be a partner to a man like that and say, how did you do it? How did you get through like that? Show me the steps. And as he shows me the step, then I follow through. I pay the price because he too, he paid the price. And now I'm going to take number three. That is Jabez. When Jabez, uh, Jabez had a family history. That he could have given an excuse. How do you expect me to succeed? Look at my background. Look at my parents. Look at daddy and mommy. Look at the name they gave me. And mommy told me I had that name because I was born in sorrow. A curse. A charm. A spell. Whatever. Was upon them. And yet this man Jabez said, I'm going to turn everything around. I'm not going to be the way my parents had been. I'm going to climb the mountain they were not able to climb. I'm going to reach places they were not able to reach. And that's what I bring to you tonight, that wherever you are now, whatever the situation is, if you will follow and just come side by side to Jabez, we'll get somewhere. I said we'll get somewhere. And my joy is when I see you another time, if you had a chance to talk to me, you'll say, Pastor, you said it, God has done it, now I am somewhere. For you to become, you know, from a nobody, and then you become somebody, God can do it and God will do it. But then you must move on with me, I have three points already, uh, you know. And Dr. Osgood told you, I'm always going to have my three points. <laughs> number one, number two, number three. Number one, Joseph, the path of progress. Joseph, the path of progress. You might say the path to progress, but the path of progress. Now, we're going to look at Genesis chapter 39. Genesis chapter 39. I'm reading from verses 3 and 4. And his master saw that the Lord was with him. Think about that. His master saw that the Lord was with him. You see, if we are going to get to the place of success, there must be that touch of the Lord, that transformation from the Lord. There must be the fact that the Lord is with us and we are with the Lord. You must have come into Christ and then Christ in you, the hope of glory. It is that, that partnership with God that hooks you up and links you up with the one that never lost a battle or the one that never failed. And therefore you want to make sure that at the very foundation you come to Christ, you abide in Christ, you live in Christ, and the Lord was with him. 
And the Lord made all that he did to prosper in his son. What else am I looking for? The Lord made all that he did to prosper in his hand. Now tell me, class, was Joseph successful? Was he successful? Everything that he did, the Lord made him to prosper. I'm not going to, I'm going to go through the history of um, Joseph with you. And you need to follow, number one, the promise of God. The promise of God. He was just growing up. And then, you know, they didn't have the whole Bible at that time. In fact, they had not even written Genesis. Moses, the writer, had not been born. And so God needed to speak to this young boy. And the Lord gave him a dream. And in that dream is a seed of a promise. If we're going to succeed, you have a promise from God. Number one, the promise of God. Then he began to tell all his brothers, can you can you imagine tonight i had a dream and the lord showed me that all of you were bowing down like this and then my own sheep was standing and then i had another dream another day all these 11 stars and the sun and the moon they bowed down to me it was a promise the lord gave him number one what's number one the promise of God, when he told them they were not happy. Number two now, persecution for godliness. Persecution. And if you are going to get to the top, you will not escape the trauma, the trouble, the problem that other people will cause you. They will say things you wouldn't like. They will do things that will embarrass you. They might insult you a bit, abuse you a bit, belittle you a bit. They might put some pressure on you. If you are a man that is destined to the top, you will not allow that pressure, that problem, that persecution to stop you. I know many people who are all excited at the beginning of life. I'm going to be this, I'm going to be this, I'm going to be that. They have a role model. They have somebody they are looking up 